Princess Pigsty. Drusilla, Rosalinde, and Isabella were real princesses. Their beautiful clothes filled 30 walk-in closets. They had footmen to blow their noses for them, and ladies-in-waiting to tidy up their rooms, hang up their clothes, and polish their crowns until they shone. Every morning, three teachers taught them royal behavior, how to sit on the throne without fidgeting, how to curtsy without falling over, how to yawn with your mouth closed, and how to smile for a whole hour without taking a break. Six footmen swept up the crumbs that fell from their plates, and six ladies-in-waiting made sure they didn't get the tiniest scratch while playing. The princesses didn't feed their ponies and pet monkeys. Oh no, they had three stable hands to do that. They even had three servants whose job it was to carry three cushions around so that the royal behinds always had something soft to sit on. What more could a princess wish for? Our children must be the happiest children in the world, said their mother, the queen, every day. But Isabella, the youngest princess, wasn't happy. Not one bit. Every night she sat by the window, looked up at the moon, and sighed. One morning, Isabella jumped out of bed and shouted in such a loud voice that the whole castle woke up. I am tired of being a princess. It's boring, boring, boring. Her older sisters looked up from their feather pillows in surprise. I want to get dirty, cried Isabella, bouncing around on the bed. I want to blow my own nose. I don't want to smile all the time. I want to make my own sandwiches. I don't want to have my hair curled ever again. I do not want to be a princess anymore. And with that, she took her crown and threw it out the window. Splash! It landed in the goldfish pond. There'll be trouble now, said Drusilla, and rang her bell. The door flew open, and in marched six servants. May we ready your highnesses for breakfast? purred the head footman. Rosalinda and Drusilla sat down in front of their mirrors right away. Isabella scrambled, quick as a flash, under her bed. Your Highness, cried the head footman, I beg you, come out from under there. No, I don't want to be dressed, Isabella called out. I don't want to have my hair curled, yakety yak. I can't stand it. I'll wash myself in the fish pond. Yourself? cried the footman in horror, in the fish pond? Goodness gracious. And the head footman immediately sent for the king. Isabella, thundered the king in such a loud voice that his wig slipped out of place. Come out from under that bed immediately. No, replied Isabella. I don't want to be a princess anymore. I'd rather starve down here. Pull her out, ordered the king. Isabella pinched and scratched and kicked, but it was no good. The footman pulled her out by her feet and dressed her in her princess's dress. Where is your crown? asked the king sternly. She threw it in the fish pond, said Rosalinda. I most certainly did, said Isabella. That thing gives me headaches, and you can't climb trees in this stupid dress. I want to wear pants. Princesses don't climb trees, thundered the king. That's just it, cried Isabella. Princesses don't do anything fun. Princesses don't even pick their noses. Princesses just stand around looking pretty. Yuck, I don't want to be a princess anymore. Fish your crown out of the pond this very minute, cried the king. I will not, Isabella shouted back. I'm never going to put that crown on ever again. The king stamped his foot. Take her to the kitchens. She shall wash dishes, clean pans, peel onions, and scrub the oven until she fetches her crown from the fish pond. 
So the footman took Isabella to their kitchens. And Isabella peeled potatoes, polished pans, plucked pheasants, and whipped the cream that her sisters liked to eat for breakfast. After three days, her father sent for her. Isabella, he sighed, you stink of onions. So what, said Isabella, did you know that cream is made from milk? Oh, I did not know that, groaned the king. Now will you fetch your crown from the fish pond? No, said Isabella. What for? Isabella, cried the king, tearing both his wig and his crown from his head in rage. Off to the pigsty with you. So the footman took Isabella to the pigsty. And Isabella helped feed the pigs and clean out the sty. The pigs nuzzled against her with their pink snouts, and Isabella scratched their bristly hides. After three days, her father sent for her again. Isabella, he groaned, you look a mess. She stinks too, cried her sisters. Did you know that pigs eat potatoes? asked Isabella, pulling a piece of straw out of her hair. And that they're incredibly smart animals? It's a shame to eat them. Isabella, cried the king, for the last time, will you now fetch your crown from the fish pond, put on a pretty dress, and comb your hair? Eh, I will not, said Isabella, but I would like to help out some more in the pigsty. Ah, cried her sisters, holding their noses. Then we don't want to share a room with her any longer. I'd rather sleep in the straw anyway, said Isabella. She fetched her favorite doll and her blanket and settled down in the pigsty. When night came and the moon shone over the castle, the king crept out of his palace. He went to the fish pond and fished out his youngest daughter's crown. Then he went to find her in the pigsty. Oh, my little daughter, he said, and sat down next to her on the straw. You are dirty, your hair feels like straw, but you look happy. Yes, Daddy, said Isabella. I'm happier than I've ever been before in my entire life. Good, the king sighed. Here is your crown. You may do as you wish with it, as long as you come back to the castle. I miss you. Mm, I suppose I can wear it now and then said Isabella. Perhaps when I'm feeding the chickens or picking blackberries. Did you know that you can make jam out of blackberries? No, I didn't know that, said the king. But one of these days, you can show me how it's done. He gave his daughter a big fat kiss on her dirty cheek, and she kissed him on his big fat nose. Then they walked back to the castle, hand in hand. Isabella still sleeps in the pigsty quite a lot. She gave her fancy clothes to the cook's daughter. And as for curly hair, Isabella never let anybody curl her hair ever again. The end. <laughs>